Okay, so today we're going to look at the difference between two different types of nucleophilic substitution reactions. We're going to look at the SN1 reaction and the SN2 reaction. Uh, both involve attack from a nuke file, such as OH- in this example, and usually involve um, something breaking off. In this case, we're going to look at the, the chlorine breaking off to form an anion. Both of them are very similar. Uh, I've chosen two different molecules uh, that have the same uh, molecular formula to try and keep things as comparable as possible. And um, we start with the SN1 reaction. In the SN1 reaction, we've got a tertiary halogen alkane where we've got a carbon surrounded by four different groups. The OH- wants to be able to attack this carbon because of a delta positive charge on that carbon. Unfortunately, that carbon is completely surrounded and there is no physical way for the OH- to get in to attack that carbon. And we refer to that as a sterically hindered molecule. So steric hindrance just refers to the number of particles that block an attack or block movement of atoms. So what we have to do is we have to wait for the chlorine to break off and we show that by a double headed arrow from the bond onto the chlorine. Okay so in this case the OH- has had no uh, effect on the reaction yet, nothing has been used with the OH-. In the SN2 reaction here we've got our uh, one chlorobutane, the OH- can easily attack this delta positive carbon. Okay, lone pair of electrons from the oxygen attacks the carbon, and be all because it's not sterically hindered. These hydrogens are much, much smaller than the CH3 groups we've got around here that block that carbon. Whereas these hydrogens, okay, might be very small. This might be quite big. This might be quite big. But there's plenty of space for the OH minus to attack. As you can see, the two products of these reactions are a little bit different. Um, to start with, the SM1 reaction, uh, I've used CH3 abbreviations here just to make it clear about the shape. You can clearly see that this shape is a uh, trigonal planar shape. And this carbon, having lost an electron, now has a very big positive charge and is referred to as a carbocation intermediate. Carbocation because we've got a carbon with a positive charge, an intermediate because we're going from here to there, to this intermediate, and then on to the final product. What we've got over here it's a trigonal bipyramidal shape where the OH is attacking as the Cl is leaving. And as a result, we have these kind of semi-bonds. And it's referred to as a transition state because it isn't ever a point. It's this turning into the product, whereas this is going into the intermediate and then a second step into the final product. And the arrows for this are quite easy. At this point, the OH- joins in. That is now enough space for that to attack the carbon. And this chlorine is now going to officially break off, okay, leaving the molecule. As you can see with the final products, they're very similar in that they have both simply exchanged a chlorine in here for the OHs down here through attack from a nucleophile like the OH-. Uh, with this one, you can see it's very much the same style as the one at the top. We've got a tertiary alcohol with carbons on the carbon with the OH. Here we've got a primary, so if you start with primary, you end up with primary. If you start with tertiary, you end up with tertiary. Secondary alcohols could fit into either way, depending on whether or not the groups on the carbon that is attacked are able to stabilize a carbocation or not. Now what I mean by that is the second kind of complicated thing with this. The first one we talked about was steric hindrance. This molecule is much more sterically hindered than this one, so SN1 sterically hindered, OH cannot attack. SN2 is sterically unhindered, okay? It, the OH is able to attack. The other thing that we have to think about is something known as the inductive effect. And it's to do with this stage in the SN1 mechanism, to do with the carbocation intermediate. Now, carbons don't like to be positive, okay? They're very unstable when they do, and in order to be stabilized, they have to have groups with lots of electrons around. Now, luckily, this carbon has got three CH3 groups, three different alkyl groups, all of which have got different uh, and, or large numbers of electrons. Carbon has also got two in its inner shell, but then there's an extra uh, eight electrons around there, all of which can just move towards the carbon. All three of these will slowly donate their electrons. The electrons aren't leaving these methyl groups, and the way we show it is with little arrows on the bonds. And what this is showing is that the electrons are just 
pushing towards that positive charge, making it slightly more stable, and enabling that to hang around long enough for the OH- to come along and attack it. Okay, so we know that the SM1 uh, carbocation that would form is incredibly stable because of the inductive effect, uh, but the SN2, if this had gone, if this molecule had gone via an SM1 mechanism, forming a carbocation here, so if we ignore these, if that was the carbocation that it had formed, there is only one group available for electron donation because these hydrogens have got so little electrons. The electrons in the hydrogens are already around the carbon, and if this had a positively ch positive charge. If this was a carbocation intermediate, there would only be resonance stabilization from one group, meaning the carbon wouldn't be stable enough to hang around long enough for the OH- to attack. So there's two different things going on. We've got the steric hindrance, the idea that these CH3s are blocking the carbon from the attack, whereas over here the H is small enough to allow the OH- to attack. And we've also got this idea of the inductive effect. Whereas a tertiary halogen came forms a tertiary carbocation intermediate that is stabilized by the inductive effect. Whereas a primary halogen came forming a primary carbocation intermediate, without these, would not be inductively stabilized. So final summary, uh, this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. There are two different mechanisms. Most involve the reaction with halogen arcane to form an alcohol using a nucleophile, could be something else, you'll see further examples in year 13. SM1, okay, sterically hindered, forms a stable carbocation intermediate, so is inductively stabilized, producing a tertiary alcohol. SN2, we've got a primary halogen arcane, forming a primary alcohol, with a transition state, because the carbocation intermediate that would be formed wouldn't be stable enough. Because it's not sterically hindered, the OH- can attack straight away. If you can remember those different things about the two reactions, you'll be doing absolutely